think I'll crack on it as early as a minute or so to go. I've got a few odds and ends that I can maybe talk about and uh, not quite so important, but just let me know. Um, you may know that for many years now we've been trying to get TableMate updated. Um, the author, the missing part of the sources, I'm told by the author, he has, and he will send me, and he supposedly, I think twice at least sent a floppy disk with one, but it's not turned up, but I still live in hope that uh, that is not totally dead. I hope we have it. Um, also, uh, photo disk has somewhat, the development is somewhat sort of uh, stalled a bit, but um, no, the house has been a bit more to work on that, and we are, um, doing some there to, especially to get it to work properly on the later hardware, um, but, uh, and with problems of loading in some JPEGs, that's something that we're trying to look into and get sorted. Um, also a bit of ancient history, really, um, that uh, <coughs> pretty well everyone here is old enough to remember um, cassette data recorders and data leads. In actual fact, um, they are BBC to three mini jacks. That was the first product that as um, CJ Micros that we ever made back in 1981. And we've actually started production of them again because people wanted to buy them for that old system. So we're doing a variety of seven to seven, and seven to mini jacks and whatever else. And then we had the problem of, well, they don't make cassette recorders anymore, not these sort of small little ones. Uh, we eventually found that you can get some cassette players uh, that actually will work as a, a data player. Well, we've, we, we tried a number of these and most of them just will not be recognised. The quality is, I don't know, it's not good enough. But we're now actually able, um, able to, if you just want to get the data off, it won't record. There's no motor control, but that normally, for purposes of loading stuff, isn't isn't an issue. But we're we're, we're doing those. Um, then also for the for the retro um, market, um, somewhere here. Yes, here we are. Um, basically, this box will take um, RGB. So from the BBC Micro, um, it will also take um, TV <coughs> outputs from uh, A3000, um, you know, even, even a RISC-PC uh, TV type modes, and convert an output um, on the SVGA to your, you know, your belt to your widescreen, whatever it is, you know, 1920 by 1080 um, uh, uh, LCD. So if you're wanting to, you watch, connect up your old computer, you can do that. We also have an HDMI version of it. Um, unfortunately, for some reason, well, it's fine on the BBC, but uh, on the uh, uh, Archimedes, the A3000 and that, it works, except the display is there and then jumps and then jumps and then jumps. We've tried all sorts of things to reduce the sync level or whatever or do the messages <coughs> there but nothing's got that working unfortunately but, but we're they're actually selling much we're selling these often all around the world. We just shipped um, one of these to Australia and one of these to um, the States. Um, so uh, they're they're quite a useful thing for people with need to access old computers. Um, but something much more up to date, but monitor related, um, is we've now found a reasonably priced, i.e. under £100, because we, we did have some, but they were like £170. But this is a four-way USB HDMI with, so it's, uh, so it's got HDMI, USB and audio, KVM, £99, including, including the VAT. Um, we didn't on the lookout for those for some for the last couple of years, but um, they are silly money on um, some of the alternatives. Also, on the uh, carrying on with the um, screen 
I've seen, I know, I know you've already got one of these. But, uh, oops, but, uh, this is the official Raspberry Pi 7-inch 800 by 480 touchscreen LCD. The uh, <coughs> Pi mounts on the back there. That's a you know, Model B connected up. The one power lead in. Um, and then, well, under Raspbian, you <coughs> can actually use it. Actually, and unfortunately, of course, under Viscos, at the moment, there is no proper, there's no um, touch support for it, but I know a number of people are itching to uh, try and rectify that, and some of them are programmers, so that may well happen, hopefully, in only a few months, to, I would hope. But we've got, uh, we've got the displays, We've actually got um, <coughs> some of the uh, the stand type. Um, yeah, the, this is a sort of stand. It doesn't actually enclose the Pi. This version. We do also have the official well, the multi comp. Just for those people that don't, if they don't realise, basically multi comp is the name that CPC and Farnell use for products that they market. You know. Their in-house name. Um, took me a little while to work that out. Eventually, got that. Now, this one is quite a lot more expensive. The case, but the thing is, it does enclose the Pi totally, which um, makes life a little bit uh, better. Um, also, there has been some discussion about some people saying, "Oh, it's upside down." And I need to tell it to rotate it. Um, basically, uh, as far as I can gather, what it was is. The display has a viewing angle of 60 degrees, six, specified as 60, 60, 60, 70, and they got it the wrong way around, so they're having to flip it. But I believe that they've changed it either, um, I don't know whether it's the start of the or the, the raspian, so there is an issue there. I think it was upside down for both, but now it's only for raspian. And but this cost needs the rotate in the config TXT file. But um, that's that. Um, then, where else? Um, right. Um, I did actually say that we'll have a prototype here. And I did mention red. Um, Unfortunately, uh, yes, it's, it's a very subtle shape of it. <laughs> now, this was going to have... one of these PCBs in it that was going to be populated plug and wired into the power supply, but unfortunately the PCBs, the populated PCs, arrived in Cambridge yesterday afternoon after the person that was bringing it down to us left Cambridge, and it, you know, they would have needed at least another day to you know, be fitted and tested and all that. But basically this is um, a titanium PC board, PCB from uh, NSR. Uh, limited. Basically, LSR Limited were developing um, a sort of an ARM-based development board for Linux, but the person um, in the company just happens to be a RISCOS user and basically therefore designed it also with RISCOS in mind. say it's Rob's person, it's on the company's house. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, well, I... <laughs> it's in the public domain. I did tell him that it was in the public domain, but he did, but he, yes, he wanted to hide his light under a bush, I told him, but anyway. But yes, anyway, so, so anyway, he's gone and um, <laughs> he's, uh, he's developed this, and um, it uses the AM5728. <laughs> Um, processor, which is a slight, is a slight uh, later, well, effectively the replacement for the OMA 5432 chip, but it uses the same uh, A15 processor at the same speed, 1500 megahertz. Um, there are a number of 
significant extras on here. Unfortunately, most users are not going to be able to use those well, for some years, possibly, um, if ever. Basically, um, I don't, I'm not sure it's going to be any faster as such. This is a, the same process of the same speed memory, um, bus, etc. It does have um, four SATA ports, which users could use um, straight away, but once you've, um, once you've got your hard drive connected, an optical drive it doesn't particularly need to be by SATA, it's uh, you know, speed, any speed improvements not going to be, well, there may not be no speed improvements or no, not noticeable. Um, and not, not many people have multiple hard drives, but you could, that's one thing that you would be able to do on day one with this. The other extras that it does offer are, um, it, it has gigabit Ethernet, and actually has two gigabit Ethernet. Well, the thing is, at the moment, the gigabit Ethernet on the Ionix, the um, Armix 6 and the uh, our iGate based system, they are not they are not running anywhere near as fast as the hardware allows because of limitations in RISCOS. RISCOS doesn't uh, do that side very well. It needs a significant rewrite. <coughs> it's not just a tweak to get it to be able to utilize the extra speed. So the fact that the hardware on here could go even faster is fairly immaterial. Um, I don't know, even once RISCOS has been improved, whether or not you'll, you'll uh, would find this to be quicker, but it might be. Having two Ethernet ports can be advantageous for some people, but it's fairly low-level networking type stuff that people want to port, and to be honest, RISCOS really isn't the thing probably you would want to do that on. And at the moment, yes, the RISCOS can't. Uh, fully utilise the, uh, you can't have both active at the same time. I believe you can select between the two, they both, they both effectively work, but you can't use, use them at the same time. Um, it does have two serial ports, which, which do work under risk off, so that is an advantage. The, in some ways, I think a nice clean board that, yes, right, our board that we have to have a little piggyback, well, a board that plugs in onto the chip um, and to the uh, some of the GPO pins to give you real time um, power control um, on that um, uh, are on the motherboard, which is nice. And um, because the way it's designed, it has uh, also a nice um, uh, back plate, and the mounting of it is simpler. You don't have to get any special metal work made, but um, <coughs> it's, it's larger than Mini ITX. So it basically has to go into a standard side of the ATX case. And it's just the fact that we had one of these uh, cut some of these some a standard ATX case and I thought it would be fairly memorable um, if we put one in there. We're not, we're, we will offer these, but we don't have a large quantity of these cases. So after that, we're probably going to be using um, this case where we're, we're, we're currently evaluating the cases because we, we do hope to be uh, basically a retail partner with LSR selling box ready to go units. LSR will um, <coughs> sell you just the motherboard itself but we will are looking to do that. So basically we chose this because it's one it's got it's got one uh, optical port um, you know drives bay um, and uh, it was a reasonable size. You can't, there are not many cases you can buy nowadays that are actually smaller than this. Um, a lot of ones that are smaller don't have room for an optical bay, which um, really means it's a lot of people they would uh, lose out to don't really want to have in an out external uh, on that. So yes, we, we are planning to do an offering <coughs> of the titanium board um, in a bundled unit. It is going to be considerably more expensive than, than uh, our previous RISCOS um, um, or also offering the iGet based system. But um, uh, it's something to watch out for. But on day one, it's not going to give the user much more, oh, I can do this. I couldn't on our iGet based system. But, uh, 
hopefully in the future it's going to be help the help you know the development of things like that to come. It is it's uh, um, it's two gigabyte and unlike uh, and that's you know, the maximum that actually the chip allows. So the, the risk cost anyway can only address two gigabytes at home, but I know Jeffrey Lee is working on some things that will allow for the, the use of the extra memory that uh, our iGate based system does have. Um, so, so, so that's titanium. In actual fact, um, uh, you may have, if you read any of the leaflets I've just already given out, you may have spotted that in actual fact our iGate based system we have decided to call the Rapido but we're actually calling it the Rapido IG. Um, it's the Rapido IG PC, because otherwise the plural would be Rapido Eggs. And fancy, that wasn't the part I said, that's silly. Um, so we'll call it uh, the PC, so if you get multiple, it will be Rapido Ig PCs. Um, and <coughs> for the titanium, because it's using the same processor, we're going to be calling that the Rapido TI PC. But going back to the Rapido, um, you may know that we have a competition to, to name it. Um, in actual fact, I think the entry that won um, came in before I officially, I just mentioned to the person, oh, I've um, got this new system, are you thinking of a name for it, any ideas? And back came um, the idea of a Rapido, and that was actually from Adrian Lees. So uh, I, I, I believe he was, he's hoping to make it today, um, so I will go and tell him good news uh, later. But uh, yes, no, we, had, we had over 100 entries for the competition, thank our names from scores of people, and uh, thank you very much. It was a difficult decision. But yes, the um, the IGET V4, V5 um, system, so we're now calling it the, the, the Rapido um, IG, it um, uses the, the fastest um, ARM processor that uh, RISCOS runs on um, and you know, is the fastest system out there. Um, now, there had been some issues that meant people weren't able to use this, the CDF, sorry, SDFS. Um, the uh, USB wasn't, there was a bit of a delay at some points in USB. There was, Ethernet was uh, a little bit temperamental, you having to set um, FS, no, is it FS window? I forget the window name, but uh, there's a setting that you had to do to get reliable access. Um, but basically, all of those um, have been sorted, along with um, what was Smart Reflex. Smart Reflex is where the system, uh, when you're not actually doing much processing, it drops the processor speed to 500 megahertz, and when you actually start doing something, it goes up to 50 megahertz. Now, this is actually in um, the CPU. You set up various registers uh, to uh, define that. Um, it goes off and does it. It doesn't rely on the operating system doing any, any changes there. But uh, that has all now been done recently, literally in the last 10 days. Um, and so we've got updates for any uh, uh, existing uh, people who bought under the early adopter scheme. And then SATA was the one other thing that drive up. That was missing. <coughs> but I'm um, very pleased to say that uh, if you come to our stand, you will be able to see <coughs> by the way. Now I picked it up here, but just to show you the fact that dragging a large file from there to there does it quickly, well, it's not particularly um, photogenic uh, uh, thing to do. But we, we can demonstrate on the show and a lot more on, on the stand. We can do that a lot more uh, and talk about the other things there on there. This thing is with the um, with the Rapido, it is um, in actual fact it's, sort of, it's really designed as an industrial type um, system, going to cars and things like that. So it, um, they even talk about that they say you shouldn't run it um, uh, for 
normal periods at 90 degrees um, and higher, um, the signal produces that expectancy. So they are, it is rated for a really quite uh, uh, heavy use. Um, uh, I think, I don't think I've actually charged on what the highest temperature I've seen. We do now have a, a, a bit of um, software courtesy of uh, Chris Cranston, who's um, who, who actually you know, on the iPhone bike will tell you what speed it's running at and what the core, what the, what the system on the chip, the temperature is running at, so you can see if it, how fast it is it's getting. Um, so you know it. Oh, the other thing is, if the chip detects it's got to 110 degrees centigrade, it automatically resets. So. Um, extra protection in there. And in fact, Chris Johnson has got some software which um, just received a copy of, which I believe you can actually specify, um, and he's done this and it will work on things like the uh, Panda board um, as well, um, whereby you, it reads the temperature um, and risk off his program will say, oh, you're getting above, and I tell you, it's a temperature that you can set, I will drop down the speed. Setting, it's got to drop down by five degrees, like by default, but you can, as user configurable, before it'll allow you to go back up to the faster speed um, on that. So the um, so the Rapido, we it can't we come to in a multiple of cases as well. Our other mini ITX cases, so it's very small, compact, um, and we've got them uh, on the stand for sale today. Um, they currently. Um, the SSD drives will be connected up via USB because the, um, the beta version of the SATA driver we only uh, only got it on Wednesday, um, and it's it's not. Uh, we need to do more testing before we um, it becomes a user uh, usable uh, an ordinary user uh, system. I I hope to within, certainly within within a month, hopefully less than that. Be able to issue updates with a uh, sort of a uh, user beta version of it, but um, it, it's really very good. There is one small aspect of it technically <coughs> that um, there's an errata in the data sheet for the chip, and it does say that when used with it, it's a SATA 2 interface, which is 3 gigabits per second, as opposed to uh, SATA 3, which is 6. Um, the, the is an errata which says that it may not negotiate the speed correctly in some SATA 3 devices. Um, <coughs> we, um, uh, the, the, the developer, he said he thought it had, it had failed like one in 20 times. Um, and all you basically, if it doesn't fail, you just shut down, restart, and it, it comes back. <coughs> I will did some tests on. Thursday and Friday, and I reset our system 60 times, and it actually worked every single time. Then, on two of the 60 occasions, the USB seemed to have uh, gone to sleep, and the keyboard and mouse, well, yeah, actually the display was blank, and the keyboard and mouse hadn't come on. Lights. I unplugged the keyboard and mouse, plugged them back in, and lo and behold, oh, the display came up. So, it's, uh, but uh, we, I have actually, to occasionally see, uh, even on you know, the Raspberry Pi and the Panda, the occasional time where the mouse or the keyboard isn't initialized on power. Maybe it's the particular keyboard I'm using, but I think I have heard of other reports on that occasionally. <coughs> but uh, yeah, just unplug, replug, and then everything goes, goes, goes along. So, um, that's uh, the, the Rapido. Then moving on to a laptop, you may recall I did talk about our plans of trying to do a laptop. Now, lots of hurdles unfortunately there, and the, all of them are not insurmountable, but rather different. So that's sort of, I'm still hoping that we may to do something, but um, uh, uh, on that, but uh, there's nothing um, uh, imminent on that. Now, um, I can say a bit more about that in a moment. Um, laptops, but um, 
one thing that <coughs> Um, so now the thing is, so we now have a really quite a wide range of RISCOS computers that we can supply of new current RISCOS systems. So it starts off with the Raspberry Pi Row, so the Pi base, so, well, so we obviously sell you a standard Raspberry Pi with as a starter kit, simple case, power supply, keyboard, mouse, which is not a lot of money. Um, pounds, something like that. Um, but for the case for, um, systems, um, we've got the Raspberry Row at starting at 224. And then we've got the Baby Panda, because the Panda board, of course, is still a, it's a very nice little system. Um, and you know, that's now starting at 280 pounds for it in a little metal case, um, small uh, five inch by five inch, maybe six inch, six inch, something like that. Um, and then we've got the laptop based sort of um, uh, portables that we, we're still offering um, with a Pi or with a Panda sitting outside. Um, and then there's the Panda Row, so yep, we can do the in the Mini ITX case, nice end user system, plug in keyboard, mouse, uh, SSD drive, or portable drive, or just a large SD card in there, connect up to your monitor. So a complete system. And then what, going back actually now to the Rapido um, IG, um, we're actually going to offer a kit, because people are saying, well, yeah, the, the full price of the, of the Rapido IG at 720 is a little bit, not particularly cheap, but if you want, uh, um, I want, you want the fastest, but want to pay a bit less, we're going to be offering the, the kit um, at 439, now, what the kit is going to consist of is, we thought we, we thought would help you a little bit, um, and so, so this is the motherboard. Now, unfortunately no one makes a <coughs> cheap just sort of like case for just the motherboard, not even, you know, the beam board type cases, you know, the acrylic ones that uh, people may have seen, that you have in but we realised that it will physically fit into one of these, <laughs> which is uh, courtesy of a CPC, who many of you know. Um, and uh, this, uh, we, we're going to provide a little template so people would know where the where the ports are. So if you want to cut it out yourself, <laughs> the thing is to do it and look really good and professional for something we could sell be just so time consuming um, I, even then I'm not sure that we could do something that would look professional um, without special kit and one or the other so but at least you know relatively easily you could put one of these in the in this box we've got um, we've got the special sticky feet that allow it to be so it'll be held in place against one side and you could use it so basically we will be offering um, the, the board case, um, the uh, micro SD card with the operating system on it, and um, a power supply. We will also be offering for more money, and yes, because the um, <coughs> uh, one with an M SATA drive, because you basically underneath here, that space there, a little SSD drive will fit. And now that we've got the software support for it, that will fit in there. But because the, uh, M, the SATA driver was quite an expensive thing to do, the, or first, the, or the cheapest kit won't include um, the SATA driver. It'll be a different version of the ROM. The more expensive version with the 32 gig of M SATA at 579 will include, you know, obviously will include the, the software that allows you to. <coughs> to uh, access that. So um, that, and then, so going up in price, so that's 579, and then we've got the Rapido IGPC itself at 720. It is, yes, more expensive than, than other offerings, but it is the fastest and offers, um, we feel, the, the best options available. Um, 
And then, in actual fact, um, I did mention that we were trying to have a, a prototype here, and we haven't got that prototype here, but I do have another prototype. It's the, uh, the pie top. In actual fact, uh, John uh, Prove here is actually from uh, pie top, and he's brought it along, and he's going to be showing it on our stand um, after we've finished here. And as a lot of you have heard of the pie top, it was launched about a year ago. Um, so basically, it is yes. I'm not sure I like the green myself. So that, that was chosen by the uh, backers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't vote. I backed it. I backed it on day one. Yeah, they're, they're also available in uh, Matt Gray. Yeah, that's that's the one. But basically, what they've done is they've um, they've put a Raspberry Pi two hidden inside here, and so um, this will. Press the button. All oh, right. Yeah, okay. There's a power down. button. Press the. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is one of the prototypes. The actual this production, they had hoped it arrived in this country literally the last day, but it's expected now to be next week because yes, we we, we are getting um, uh, uh, we we're getting one of the from the first batch, and we will be offering it as a bundle with Riscos. And so if you're interested in talking to us um, about that, we, we, we hope to make that available um, to end users in December. Uh, production up until the, uh, then is all already committed, but um, our slot, um, we should be able to get, in, get supplies in December of it. Now, at the, uh, at the moment, it, will, it, is, it is running um, Raspbian, um, and we'll. Uh, it's Sorry. Oh, oh, this this is to allow you to get access to GPIO. It's, sorry, yes, it slides out. Well, they've got uh, right. Well, it'd be easier. Uh, uh, more details like that. Experts really come and see us on the stand <laughs> but, uh, uh, about options and that. But basically, so there's the Raspberry Pi two there. At the moment, a Wi-Fi, it's got a uh, Wi-Fi dongle in one there, um, and another connection through to effectively to get you access to the keyboard and mouse. Um, but there's two there, but they're not immediately accessible. But uh, with, once you remove that, it's relatively easy to put that in. And then basically this board is to do with the, with the graphics. It takes the HDMI output um, to send it to the screen, and then Power boards underneath here? Yeah, the batteries, because we've got four parallel batteries that we actually designed before Apple did. Um, so it allows it to have 12 hours plus battery life. Well, they still see you. They still see you. Very long. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, so yes, yeah, so this is what you asked me. It has a small uh, touchpad there, two button mouse buttons. But unfortunately, Riscos has a tradition of three. And it really does utilise the other, but there are ways and means around that. But uh, uh, I personally actually like to just plug a mouse in and use a mouse because yeah. <laughs> I, I don't get on with touch pad inside. I think it is the the older you are, the less likely are you to get on. With <coughs> but uh, so so this is if you want um, a Raspberry a, 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 um, you know, Pi type based system. Um, that are in a laptop, this you know, this will do the job. Because one of the things at the moment, the compute module is still on Raspberry Pi One. It's not; they haven't updated it to the later um, uh, processor. But, that's going to come. but yes, so John's going to be on our stand, and uh, we'll be able to demonstrate and uh, talk to you about this. So, so we did manage to get a, a, a prototype um, here, and. Guess where it will take you right into the, um, the OS. Because <laughs> we actually designed an um, operating skin above Raspbian, it's our own flavor, that you don't have to do any of the tough work of reading a Raspberry Pi and create it very seamless. 
So that's our icon dashboard. Um, and you can always switch to the desktop if you want. Yeah, well, you know. That's uh, yes. being based. So lots of things there to um, possibilities. Um, but yes, they deliberately left space so people could possibly put other electronics in there that you might connect up to the, up in uh, some way or another. Interesting. Let's try to, so the, cheap, the GPO is connected up to? Yeah, it is. So the, the GPO, all the 40 pins are used at the moment. But um, we are going to launch a breadboard, a, a breadboard that allows you to access the GPO. So we have um, all full access to them. Yeah, but that's kind of but yes, it's actually, uh, they've managed to fit it in really quite a, a small space <coughs> by, by having a custom case, which is really quite neat. It's a um, uh, uh, resolution that, unfortunately, I haven't got information at hand, but uh, I'm sure. It's HD LCD, I don't have the resolution. Yeah. Okay. It's a uh, yeah, nice crisp display. So, anyway, right. Um, I think yes. Questions about the uh, about the pie top may be best addressed to John on the stand. But any other questions that you've got? How did you change from the USB to SATA on the uh, rapid rapido? On the rapido. Um, so we wanted to get get USB. Oh right, okay. Yeah. And basically, what what we've done at the moment is there is a, a, a USB. Um, there's a USB. The cable plug is the USB port with a SATA adapter on it. The SATA cable plugs into the, plugs into the SATA drive. Yeah. What we've done is, on those that we've already shipped, with that is because, um, so that we could ship them with an SSD drive, we supplied a, a 2.5 inch SSD drive mounted in case. But what we've done is, you can get a, a, an adapter that plugs into the M SATA slot, that gives you a standard SATA uh, socket. So we, um, but that's hidden underneath the board. So what we've done is we've already plugged a SATA data, data cable into there, which at the moment is going to nowhere. So like what I did on Wednesday was when I got my first version of the ROM, I opened up the computer. I did have to get. Um, take the, the, the cradle out, which has the CD drive and the SATA drive underneath it. I just lifted that out, pulled the data cable off the SATA drive, and took away that its interface cable to the hub, and plugged this other cable just in. And because it had already been RISCOS formatted, I just plugged it in, turned on 128 gigabyte, this cable with the item bar, 128 gigabyte SSD like it because that's the name of my hard drive, just as it always has done. The only thing was that um, you click a middle button over it and it says ADFS rather than SCSIFS. It's, um, and then to get it to def default to that, you have to start configure the file system ADFS. That was it. Um, the ROM is still loaded from the SD card um, we may move over to loading the ROM from, because there's some EMMC memory on there. Um, theoretically, we could have, um, and it should work, you could load the ROM from SD, because there are some DIP switches actually on the board. They're very small. Um, because this has got our control board already on it, and then there's a row of DIP switches here. And moving one of those says, instead of booting first from, uh, from SD, boot from SATA. But um, that's one thing that um, um, I'm not certain if that yet has been fully, uh, you know, is fully working. If, but uh, I think in some ways it would be preferable to, be, to, to boot from elsewhere. But Use. In actual use, it's probably good to, good. Once, or once they got it, you could theoretically boot from SATA, um, SD, and um, or, or the MMC. Um, at the moment, I don't think the MMC, which is effectively another second SD 
um, uh, you know, interface. So, so yes, it was it was literally uh, that simple to change over. I did find a slight anomaly. One time it said it was all about swapping back and fro, and I, I said I said so I said start configure file system um, SDFS. It said oh file system name not known, but uh, it then just did it again. Um, it, it works. You know, I don't know why it's something. That was a hot one minor glitch, but uh, not repeated. But I always say in these things, if you get if something happens once, well, make per, make a sort of mental note of it and move on. Um, it starts having more months, then you start investigating. But it's, uh, for a one-off, it's not worth really investigating. Um, right. So, yeah. Anything else about? Couple questions. You mentioned not many people you call for hard drive. I always have had two hard drives. I do a regular daily backup in addition to remote one. All of your recent machines I look at don't seem to mention the possibility of multiple drives. Is that because you think SSDs are infinitely reliable? Or? Uh, no, 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 nothing. nothing no bit of Electronix is, is 100% reliable. Um, I, I, quite, I, I quite agree um, on that. Um, we tend to make off computer backups via the network. Um, it, 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 a lot of our stuff tends to be restored on a central server. So I use, this, you know, as I say, like in my office I've got five computers and down that and that's down, downstairs more and more. So we tend to keep, have a sort of effective file server and keep copies on that and make copies, regular copies um, of, from that. Um, in the machine, then that really just depends on the particular um, case you've got. Um, some of the cases do support, um, in EITX cases, multiple um, uh, two and a half inch hard drives. Um, um, you, you, you can have a spinning rotating, you can use a USB pen, an SD card, you know. Um, obviously, um, uh, uh, the US, a um, something like an SSD uh, would be a good one. Now, if you're going to something like that, obviously that's one advantage with with the titanium because you can have two SATA things and you really get the, the speed there. Um, on you know, the, uh, the other systems, you're talking about here one. Now you get uh, on the, uh, the Rapido. Your main drive yes, is SATA. And then your what, any other storage is going to be a slower access storage. But yes, there are ways and means of, of doing that. I've got to remind myself quite what um, I know that definitely some of the cases. In actual, I think the smallest case I know definitely so it talks about having <coughs> support for multiple. In the other cases, I'm not certain. <coughs> it's um, well, that's for proper mounting, certainly. I know a number of them, well, well nooks and crannies with a two and a half inch SSD drive is in the because they're really quite thin. So they, they could, be, they could have a lot of those if they have too much problem. But uh, yes, that's always worth it. I'll uh, we'll look into that more. The other question, uh, one of the things that held speed down on risk was a little bit rapid, but it was hardware. Where are we on that? Right, the, yes, the, the hardware to do it is there, but um, in all these modern systems, have much, much better hardware. It's uh, quite why they split up. And you've got the neon part and the sorry, yeah, VFP. Um, quite why what the difference is. I, I that's that's. That's going to be really quite technical yeah. to get into that slightly. But yes, the hardware is there to do it. Um, Unfortunately, Wiscus doesn't need to utilise it um, for one or two programs that people have started dabbling in that use it. I'm sure more of it, it's, more, it's going to come more, but at the moment um, there isn't not much there, unfortunately, for that. Any other questions? Thank you very much for, for your time. And, uh...